Hi, my name is Leroy Herring. We invite you to another series on uh, Emmaus Road podcast. For the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the subject of redemption. Some of it may be what you're familiar with hearing. Uh, some of it may not be. What we would invite you to do is to go along with us in the Word and follow the Word as we go through it and then pray and ask the Holy Spirit, is this coming from Him or is this coming from something else? A lot of what will be presented is probably not what you may have been accustomed to hearing. This is what we do at Emmaus Road uh, podcast. This is also what we do at notwithoutblood.com uh, website where we have uh, several hundred teachings on there. <clears throat> we challenge people that are just stuck in the rut of traditional religion. We come against religion in all forms and we want the true Word of God to be active in our life as witnessed to us by the Holy Spirit. Christianity is about belief or unbelief. Do I believe that I cannot live this life and that I need a Savior? <clears throat> Do I believe, <clears throat> pardon me, that Christ is the only means and way to God the Father, not through any other religious organization or religious sect or religion, period. Is Jesus the only way to God the Father? <clears throat> Yes, to be plain and simple. All other religions have a pathway of you doing, completing certain things, and then you are qualified to reach your goal. Where Christianity, our God, created the solution that we needed for us to just believe in Him and He created the pathway to the goal. I don't. You know, if you, <clears throat> if you think about, I'll turn over and read a, a familiar passage to everyone. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. But he hath not, he, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's John 3 17 and 18. What's the issue? The issue is, is not sin because redemption has taken away the sin issue in Christianity. Christianity is based on belief. Do I believe that I need a Savior? Do I believe Jesus is the only means of my salvation? <clears throat> and do I believe that I cannot live a life worthy of attaining eternal relationship with God the Father on my own. I can't do it. You can't do it. If you could, then why do we need Christ? Why do we need a Savior <clears throat> if I'm going to put my salvation on myself? Again, John three seventeen and 18. 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world <clears throat> through him might be saved. That is the end result of him providing redemption before the foundation of the, of the world. He came into time so people could physically see what he did. So they could, you know, it was so important. It, it, it changed the calendar of, of time that we had. We went from B.C. to A.D. It, it changed everything because it was such an earth-changing event. But it's based on belief, not my actions. Again, if it's based on my actions, then Psalms 103 tells me, you know, I haven't dealt with you on the basis uh, of your sins or rewarded you according to your iniquities. Because if he dealt with me based on my sins, I'd be toast. If he rewarded me based on my iniquities, I'd be toast. Uh, th uh, there would never be a way I could get out. Him providing redemption for all of us shows the grace of God exhibited towards his creation. Unbelief, as the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 3.12, any of you of evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Why would he say that? Because we have departed from what God initially accomplished and did before the foundation of the earth. <clears throat> before the foundation of the earth, he provided redemption for the sins of mankind. Now this is where it gets sticky with and for a lot of people. When was forgiveness of my sin accomplished. We make that an issue of unbelief. The unbelief issue, number one, it to most people in the modern church today, unbelief issue number one, when was the forgiveness of sin on my personal basis accomplished? Let me read you a short paragraph. Most people, including Christians, see the forgiveness of sin or sins as something that God can do and continues to do, but not something he has completed. We believe that God can do it. We believe he has done it. We believe he will do it. But not something that has already been completed. Completely completed. Now why do I say that? Because we affirm that belief system when we go to the altar and are told to beg God for forgiveness of all of our sins, confess all of our sins so that he will know that we are serious. Now, I'm not trying to belittle that or make light of people begging and confessing sins before God. But what's the issue here? I am begging him to do something that he has already done. I am trying to be sorrowful enough that he will have pity on me enough to do what I want him to do, the forgiveness of my sins, not understanding, realizing, knowing, believing that what I'm begging him for has already been accomplished. And the problem with that is that this creates 
the possibility that God will not forgive us. In other words, if if I offend my best friend and I go to him and I say, uh, Barry, please forgive me. Please, you know, I really didn't mean to do that. I am putting the forgiveness in front of somebody like, all right, now he can say yes or he can say no. He can either do it or not do it. I'm doing the same thing with God at the altar. I'm looking at him, well, I've got to be resourceful. I've got to be remorseful enough. I've got to cry enough. I've got to really be heartfelt for him to forgive me like I am trying to get him to do something that he really doesn't want to do. 